My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today, because we've been doing a lot of videos or the videos are building up towards um, fasteners, bolts, galvanic corrosion, torque testing, so I'm setting up a torque tester so we can break stuff, Allen keys, spanners, you know, sockets, you name it. Um, and because we started off quite a while back doing steels, you know, talking about, um, well we're getting into stuff like uh, plastic excuse me, plastic and elastic deformation, um, oh god, uh, ultimate tensile strength, all the rest of it, um, Young's modulus, and all the rest of it, I keep on saying all the rest of it, I know, it's just a habit I have, <laughs> um, we need to talk about stresses, that's what this video is about, holy shit, I'll get it out one day, so we need to talk about stresses, and someone did rightly say, in the last video I did about this kind of based on this was that I had a really shit analogy of stress and strain at work, in the workplace if you're in an office. Yeah, it was the wrong way around. A shit analogy, I'm trying. <laughs> but anyway, I'm deaf in this ear, it's doing my nothing. Um, so, fucking shut up Matt and get on with it. So, we basically want to talk about mechanical stresses. Um, because... Uh, that's really what you know that's really um, what we want to focus on because engines um, so let's talk about stresses oh, Jesus Christ I'm not with it today at all um, so number one is uh, compressive stress or com just compression so compression is you know quite obvious uh, or hopefully it is to most of you that's when you get something and you give it a good squeeze you know, you give it a good, ah, uh, just applying a load to something. Now, compressive stress can also be like just due to gravity, um, just to the gravitational well of the Earth. You know, if you put heavy stuff on top of something, that's compressive stress. Um, so let's make this relevant for engines. So things that are under compressive stress is your piston. Obviously, when it goes bang, pushes down, that compresses your piston. Uh, wrist pin, all the rest of it, and con rod. That's another good one, and loads of other things. Um, but yeah, we'll just stick with them two for the time being. So the second kind of uh, mechanical stress that I want to point out is tensile stress. Um, this is things under tension. So like a guitar string, um, or your tendons, that's where all this comes from. Um, so ten I've got to write it down. Uh, tensile stress. Uh, so things that are under tensile stress are your uh, bolts, just bolts in general, uh, your cylinder bolt, look, look, so, <laughs> um, bolts, so you know your head bolts, stuff like that. Mainly all bolts are under tensile stress in one way or another. Um, your conrod again, <laughs> conrod again, and there are many, many others um, that are under tensile stress. So that is basically just the stretching of something. Um, well, it's just stretching something. How else can I say it? You know, it's just getting, we're getting our floppy dick out again. And it's just the pulling of something. And when you pull something, you'll notice that it'll um, go thinner and grow in a let expand in its dimension. Uh, that's called necking. And we'll get to that in a completely different video when we look at failures. So, number three. This one might not be as obvious. Um, to people, this is what we call shear stress. So shear stress, and basically the way to remember it is like shears, you know. So if you're cutting a bloody tree down or a hedge or something, something like that, it's this action of um, moving parallel to each other but opposite each other like that. Or maybe you can be pulling apart. It doesn't really matter. Um, so shear stress can happen to bolts sometimes. We have a lot of rotational components, so if a bolt shears off due to um, some kind of failure. So a good example is a brake disc. You have a brake disc and it has just one or two um, bolts in it and then you rotate it like that. One side can be fixed, one side can be moving, or they can move opposite each other, it doesn't really matter. So that's shear stress. And we'll just say bolts in your disc for an example of that one so the next one we have 
is uh, number four, obviously. Uh, the next stress we have is torsional stress. So torsional stress, and we'll get my floppy dick out again. Um, is like I've put. Well, we've only just got these lines still on here. Is this twisting action? It's applying torque to something, and you'll notice the way that deforms, and we'll talk about that in the future. Um, but uh, torsional stresses, your crankshaft is the main example. Um, your crankshaft has to go or withstand torsional stresses. Um, your camshaft as well. Uh, we'll look further into that. Just anything that twists, you sprocket, anything. So now we've done all these ones, there's a fifth one, which is a bending stress. Now, bending stresses are a bit weird because um, it's, uh, what, how do I say this? It's a mix of two. So if you have something and it can either be fixed here like this, or it can be uh, fixed at both ends, just like a, a bridge would bend or sag or something like that, or a tightrope, that's another one. <laughs> See, that's the problem. If you stand on a tightrope, well, I'll actually use tightrope as a good example. Um, if you stand on a tightrope, so just say we've got this rope here and it's fixed at either end, like this, and then you apply a load to it, you apply a stress to it, the whole thing will bend so we'll just delete that one the whole thing will bend and now this is under tension <laughs> so it's pulling here like so and if you actually could look at the rope when it bends when it deflects like this you've got a bit of both going on here because if we split it down the middle that's a really let's get rid of that because that's not really clear is it Oh, let's just get rid of it and do it again. If you actually look at the rope or a wire, oh for fuck's sake. My God, why does anyone even watch this shit? <laughs> I'm just all over the place. So if you have it like this, if we pick the center line like so, what's happening is, is we're actually under compression here because we're trying to squeeze more stuff into the same volume and then you have uh, tensile stresses here like so because this is trying to stretch so back to my floppy dick if we get this and then we bend it like this you can see that the the, the underside here the, the tighter radius cripples so it cripples there like that that's because this is under compression this is nice and tight which means that that's under tensile stress so bending stresses are a way of describing um, multiple stresses at work. A bending stress is what your conrod goes under, so conrod is another one. You can see that the conrod has to actually to survive a lot of these stresses. Um, when your conrod is kicked out like this, the piston is still pushing down, you can almost think your crank pin has been fixed. So there's this bending moment. So it also has to resist that. One other one that's a subset that I don't want to call mechanical stresses, um, but we'll just double that up like so. This is thermal stress. Um, thermal stress, which can be due to uh, cycling, so expanding and contracting. A lot of thermal stresses are, again, can be uh, broken down to subsets of compressive stress within the material between grain boundary layers tensile stresses and all sorts shear stresses as well inside a material thermal stresses can also be uh, thermal shock loading uh, where you suddenly heat something up and it suddenly has to expand stuff like that we'll kind of just separate these like so now there are quite a few more um, stresses uh, some to do with uh, liquids and gas, well, not gases, but more liquids with expansion and contraction, stuff like that, that can put internal stresses. We don't want to really touch that yet, that's a totally different thing, because it's a bit more involved than to understand what these stresses are. Um, but from these, you can pretty much uh, see most of the stresses 
or it's easier to understand these simple stresses. Um, the other thing is as well is that you'll know if you, if you start to think about it, you can see that a lot of these uh, stresses or a lot of these components are under different stresses. You can have multiple stresses at one time or through a cycle of something. So a con rod is the best example. On the downstroke, when uh, you're on the power stroke, the um, con rod is under you know immense uh, compressive stress and bending stress at the same time but it depends where it is in its arc when it's at tdc and you uh you get an ignition event that's solely pretty much compressive as it moves out of plane as the conrod starts to move out of plane then you you have these bending stresses as well as compressive stresses you could almost call it nearly a shear stress um, and then when it basically when the piston gets down to the bottom a lot of these stresses disappear and then when it goes back up when it goes back up and gets to top dead center again um, the momentum of the piston being flung up and then slowing down to stop because the conrod is actually restraining it from flying out of your cylinder then the conrod is under tensile stresses um, so you can see that it depends in within the motion of the, the conrod that it goes through all these different stresses and all the rest of it and it would be lovely just to separate everything out like this and say this only goes under compressive stresses this only goes under tensile stresses and we will pick the materials to fit them um, you know a lot of the times it's not the case it has to do a bit of both and this is why a lot of people ask why can't we make a, a, a nylon con rod or why can't we make this or why can't we make that and we'll go through these things of why you can't because some materials are brilliant um, at certain stresses so reinforced concrete is one of them concrete is great under compression shit under tensile stress uh, absolutely shocking uh, proportional stresses and then that's why we have reinforced concrete stuff like that glass you know, glass is excellent, I say excellent, glass is good under compressive stress, tensile stress, not very good whatsoever. You try and bend, uh, bending stresses, you try and bend glass and puff, and again, tensile stresses. So there is a definite relationship between um, the material hardness and how it can deal with some of these stresses, especially tensile stress and shear stress um, and torsional stress. Uh, when it comes to quite brittle materials, they're generally quite shit. But you know, it depends what it is. Um, you know, some materials are not bad and vice versa. And this is how we pick certain materials. And we'll go through them and we will have test samples where I can apply a force to uh, a bit of titanium, aluminium, steel and all that stuff. And we can basically just not really test and measure so much, but literally just have a look at how these materials deal with um, these stresses and not only that is we can also look at the stress strain graphs and look at fatigue and look at uh, fracturing and yielding and ultimate tensile strength and blah 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 hope that makes sense like I said this is just a, an easy breakdown to um, we're going to use these term we're going to use these terms a lot more in the future so you know there's some guys a lot of you guys probably know this but there's some guys out there i've never heard of they've heard of these things but they didn't realize what they were um and the, there's a lot of guys who aren't you know english isn't their first language so trying to you know feed them the words first is a good idea instead of me always answering comments going what the fucking hell does torsional stress mean hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit sheer stress <laughs> brake discs that's what i was thinking of so, just to add, sheer stress, before anyone puts in the comments, brake pads. <laughs> Don't know why I had to just get that out there, just to stop people commenting. Yeah, brake pads. Your brake pads, when your disc is going that way, your brake pads slam into them. And uh, that causes the brake pads to want to try and follow the disc, which puts sheer stresses. On your brake pad material, the, block, the actual blocks themselves. I'm done.